you burn something and you send the smoke up, God gets a crack at determining the quality of your offering, the quality of your sacrifice. Well, let's get, let's be perfectly clear about this. If your sacrifices aren't first rate, the nature of your relationship with the infinite is going to suffer dreadfully. And that's exactly what the story of Cain and Abel reveals. Now, Abel, he's a trusting character. He believes in the nature of experience and the nature of existence. When he's called on to make a sacrifice, he sacrifices the best that he has to offer. And that makes God happy. And as a consequence, everything that Abel touches turns to gold. Everyone likes him. They respect him. His crops multiply. He's successful with women. Plus, he's a wonderful guy. So you could hardly imagine a more annoying creature if you possibly attempted to do it. Whereas Cain... See, Cain has reacted to his self-consciousness by withdrawing from the infinite. And there's a tremendous danger in that because it starts to mean that he relies purely on his own devious devices to sail his ship through the shoals of life. He believes as his arrogance develops, as a consequence of his withdrawal from the infinite, a contact that he can't tolerate because he can't tolerate his own vulnerability, that he's able to deceive the structure of reality itself, to offer second-rate sacrifices to God himself, who can see absolutely everything, because the infinite is absolutely everything, and to prevail nonetheless. Well, needless to say, this does not work. And it, it doesn't work in an obvious way. If you talk to people and they reveal to you their unnecessary suffering. It's very straightforward to look behind what it is that they have to say. They'll tell you the poor decisions they made in their lives and the opportunities that they didn't take and the chances that they didn't, they didn't have enough courage to grasp and the sacrifices they failed to make. There's nothing mysterious about it. And their own experiences teach them full well that they pathologize the relationship they have with the nature of reality. Well, that's a terrible thing. Well, and Cain is dreadfully unhappy. He's unhappy because nothing he ever wants happens, and that's partly because he doesn't really want it, because if he really wanted it, he'd make the right sacrifices. The salt is rubbed into his wounds by the existence of his brother, for whom everything seems simple, but of course really isn't. Cain goes to complain to God. And I had to read three or four different translations of these particular verses to figure out what this meant. And he says, what in the world is going on here? I'm working myself to the bone. I'm sacrificing things left, right, and center. Everything I touch turns to dirt. Everything turns against me. Like, what's up with the nature of reality? Cain's essential vulnerability is revealed and exacerbated by his pathological attitude towards his own actions. God says to him, essentially, sin is a predatory cat that crouches at your doorway and leaps on you at will. But if you only wanted to, you could master it. And that is absolutely the last thing that Cain wants to hear. Because if things are going from bad to worse for you, and you're playing a causal role in it, there's nothing more horrible than some, that, than, that someone can do to you, but reveal to you in a way that you can't deny that you're entirely complicit in your own demise. And that's exactly what God does to Cain. And so what does Cain do? Well, the logical thing would be listen, because if the structure of reality itself tells you something, it's best to listen, since there's no way out of it, but that's not what Cain does. He's so incensed by his essential vulnerability, compromised and exacerbated by his failure to make the appropriate sacrifices and to conduct himself appropriately, that he decides then and there, number one, to destroy his ideal, to reduce the tension that he feels when that ideal exists as a contrast point, and number two, to destroy the favored son of God. And so he goes out into the field and kills Abel. And God comes along and says, where's my favorite son? And Cain says, I killed him. And it's so interesting to me that that story is placed, really, it's the third story in the Old Testament. It's, it's with the archaic stories. And it's a story that reveals, as far as I can tell, that there are two essential patterns of reaction to the self conscious, vulnerable conditions of existence. And one is humble approach to in infinity with determined attempts to make the appropriate sacrifices. The other is arrogance, resentment, the keeping of everything good for oneself, and the degeneration of the soul into something that's homicidally murderous.